Dragon Ball Superhero Rewrite. So this is going to take place in the year 793. It's going to be a year and a half after the events of the Moron Granola arc in this rewrite. Gohan, Goten, Oob, and Frost are all dressed as superheroes and stop a gang of bank robbers. Gohan is dressed as Great Saiyan Man. Goten is dressed as Great Fuso Man. Oob is going to be Papaya Man. And Frost is going to be Frozo Man, making the Dragon Heroes team. After stopping the bank robbers and putting them all in prison, the group celebrates together. Pan, Marin, and Videl all cheer them on, while Bullet, Trunks, and Piccolo shake their heads. Piccolo flies off. A little while later, Marin gets a FaceTime from her father, who has been beaten up and collapses to the ground. Back at his home, Piccolo is meditating by himself in his castle. Gamma 2 shows up and starts talking to Piccolo after shooting at him. Piccolo dodges the attack, and Gamma 2 keeps calling him Demon King Piccolo. The two get in a fight, and Piccolo ends up getting beaten up by him, having a bunch of boulders collapse all over him. He then shouts that he's defeated a villain. This is when Gamma 1 shows up, holding an unconscious 17 and 18 over his shoulders. Piccolo is still alive from the blast and looks up from the rubble and sees the two flying off. He then stands up and flies to the lookout. Back to the hero team. They help heal an injured Krillin, and he tells them what had happened. The Gamma 1 showed up, putting 18 in a mechanical trance, threw her over his shoulders, and said that he was going to rebuild the Red Ribbon Army the way it once was. Back to Piccolo, he arrives on the lookout and talks with Dende. Dende says he knows what happened to him, and he knows he wants to get more power to be able to help and save the world. Dende offers himself up for fusion, but just before Piccolo is about to touch his chest, he pulls away and says no, then he needs to do it on his own. Piccolo then goes and gets Kami's old ship and flies to New Namek. In the Red Ribbon base, Gamma 1 and 2 arrive. They talk with Android 21, who begins working on 17 and 18 to rebuild them and make them super. She says they will rebuild the Red Ribbon army, that they will save the world just as the Red Ribbon did in the past, and then showing the Red Ribbon as a triumphant, superhero-like team. When Piccolo arrives on Namek, he talks to the Namekian Elder and asks if he knows Piccolo's true name or what caused the drought so long ago. He says no, tells him to go check the ancient temples underneath the ocean. Back on Earth, Bulla is researching the Red Ribbon Army. She finds a lot of information about them and tells them the new location of its new base. The Dragon Team then goes heads off after the location. Bulla says she's going to stay back and research a little bit more, but will be there soon. Back on Namek, Piccolo dives in the ocean towards the temples. On the inside, there is no water, so he's allowed to read the scrolls uninhibited. While he does, he reads about the disappearance of the original Namekian, Zalama, the man who created the Super Dragon Balls. After his disappearance, the Namekians begin fighting each other over the Dragon Balls and what to do with them. The negative energy and the Civil War caused a drought in the year 261. Kados, Kami's father, sent him away on a ship during the drought. Duru was sealed in this temple and was able to survive the drought, being the last Namekian. Piccolo tries to remember his name, but it's blocked by a laugh by the Demon King Piccolo as a picture of him runs through his mind. But out from the shadows doesn't walk Demon King Piccolo, but Zalama. On Earth, the Dragon Team arrive at the Red Ribbon Base. It's raining in the background. Gohan fights Gamma 1. Goten and Frost fight Gamma 2. Pan arrives dressed in a hero costume, claiming to be the Great Saiyan Girl. She is the fifth member of the Dragon Hero Team. Android 21 then walks out, and she says she's here to rebuild the heroes of the Red Ribbon and to defeat the villain Goku and his followers. Super 17 and 18 are then revealed to the group. 18 fights Pan and Krillin. Granola then arrives after being gone for so long. He is revealed to have his own hero costume and be the sixth member of the Rangers. I mean, Dragon Hero Team. He fights against 17, as Oob fights Android 21. Zalama takes Piccolo to hell, much like Dante and Virgil in the Divine Comedy. The two search after Demon King Piccolo, who is the only man who knows his true name. Once they find his father, Piccolo and Demon King Piccolo fight each other, but not in a physical battle, in a spiritual one. One that Piccolo ends up winning. Once he does, Demon King Piccolo reveals his true name, Arturius. Once Piccolo says the name, he has his power unlocked. Zalama then takes Piccolo back to the lookout on Earth. When Piccolo has his back turned to him, he disappears. While Krillin is fighting Android 18, she has a flashback to her earlier years. When her and 17 were teenagers, their parents had died. They had gone into foster care and bounced around from home to home. They lived in the mountains over where Dr. Jarreau's lab was. And eventually one day, he kidnapped them both and experimented on them using the Android technology. Krillin then talks to his wife and is able to break the trance from her. Granola is able to defeat Android 17 and they break the trance on him as well. Goku and Vegeta then arrive on the scene. Android 21 becomes furious seeing Goku and she transforms into to her Majin Buu state. Goku and Vegeta then transform into their Ultra Forms as well. They fight against Android 21 and are able to overcome her, much like they did against Jiren. But Android 21 will not give up so easily, and she throws Goku into a portal, much like Samurai Jack had happened to him. Vegeta is then blindsided by her. Oob then powers up to his ultimate power, and he fights against Android 21, but she is able to defeat him. This is when Piccolo arrives on the scene. Piccolo then fights 21, but she knocks him off the Red Ribbon and down a crevice. While he is falling, he sees a vision of all the Namekians, and he sees Shenron, and he roars at him. Piccolo then has his true power unlocked, 
and he becomes that orange form. We're just going to call this the true Super Namekian transformation. Gamma 2 then charges after him, punches him in the chest, but to no avail. Piccolo then one-shots him, knocking him out. Piccolo flies after Android 21 and is able to defeat her. This is when Bulo arrives on the scene. She has a guest and pulls out Dr. Hito. Only this time he looks like a younger version of Android 16. He explains to her that he is her grandson. He tells her the truth about the Red Ribbon Army, that after they were defeated, Android 16 was killed. Dr. Jiro gave her false memories of what the Red Ribbon Army actually was. With tears in her eyes, she accepts the truth. But this is when Cell Max arrives. So this isn't going to be the Cell Max you saw in the movie. This is actually going to be a Cell Junior. He explains that he, him and his brothers were tamed by Android 17 on their island. But he was not okay living in peace, unlike his brothers were. Eventually, he found it at his heart and wanted revenge for his father. So he used Dr. Jiro's machines in order to gain power and become his ultimate Cell Max form. He then was able to unlock and awaken Android 21 and help Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 kidnap Android 17. He's far more powerful than his father, but looks just like Cell Max did in that form, only no hammer on the tail and he can actually talk and isn't just a mindless monster. Cell Jr. Max and Piccolo have a kaiju fight and a huge transformations. The two are dead even and at a stalemate. This is when Cell Jr. blinds everybody and absorbs Android 21, becoming the golden Cell Jr. He beats up Piccolo and the rest of the Dragon Team. He prepares to kill everybody, but Gohan jumps in front of the blast. Gohan thinks of his family and transforms into Beast Gohan. His power is like that of Gogeta's when he combined both Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct, but he is far more powerful than Gogeta was during that time. Cell Jr. and Gohan fight. They are both dead even when it comes to power, but Gohan is able to defeat him due to his superior martial art technique. Cell Jr. is going to destroy the world though. This is when Gamma 2 flies up all the way into the sky, dives headfirst into Cell Jr.'s stomach, and makes him vomit up Android 21, but killing Gamma 2 in the process. Gohan wastes no time, charges up the special beam cannon, hits Cell Max Jr. right in the forehead, and kills him. Just as Android 21 and Gamma 1 apologize to everybody, a huge explosion goes off in the Red Ribbon base. Android 21 says that the explosion will destroy many cities around them and take countless lives. She then tells everybody to fly off and that she will turn off the machine herself. She flies down to the machines and a mini explosion goes off as everybody watches. The Red Ribbon Arby falls into the ocean and is destroyed forever. Everyone is sad, but they congratulate each other as the city is saved and so is the world. Pan looks up and wonders where Goku is. While floating in darkness, Goku hears a voice talking to him. He looks around and from the shadows appears Beerus.